All right, thanks for watching the latest episode of We Gotta Believe. Make sure you subscribe across everything here on YouTube. If you're listening on iTunes, if you're listening on Spotify, anywhere you watch or listen to us, make sure you subscribe, keep your notifications on, leave a comment, support the pod. You gotta believe. All right, we have a special Memorial Day weekend special. We got to believe coming off of the beautiful high of last night. Shout out Nick Plummer. Shout out Edwin Diaz. Shout out the entire New York Metropolitan's ball club. Summer is unofficially started as Tommy Cheese Balls rang in. And with that, you're going to need to chill out a little bit because life's about to get hectic. Kids are about to be out of school. Um, I'm just not going to name names here, but one of my two kids, there was – Rumors of just like leaving them outside the house like Wilma does for Fred at the end of the Flintstones. So we're all going to need to chill out a little bit. Even the New York Mets cannot help, you know, apparent chill during these hectic times. Pollen's falling down. The temperature's rising. Everyone's losing their minds. Dude, tomorrow, tomorrow's going to be 96, bro. <laughs> Keep your kids locked up. Keep the air conditioner on. Keep the kids locked up and keep your cores Light in the refrigerator. Once you see those blue mountains, you know they're ready to rock because it's the beer that's made the chill. It'll help yeah. chill down your core, help chill down your brain, and make everything all right. Because when I need to take a second for myself, I reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash believe. You don't have to leave the house. You can just be in the house stuck with the kids because they basically chain you to your own house because you can't go anywhere fun with them. Like the beach. God forbid go to the beach or the park this time. No way. They deliver the cords light straight to your door. You pop it in, drink it down, and makes everything right when the Mets aren't playing. Again, celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Kev, how are we feeling after last night, after our, our, our marathon session? And, uh, I mean, I guess a top, th- a top three win against the Phillies along with the no-hitter and the uh, eight-run comeback in comeback. the ninth Yeah, like, oh where, where do you put it? The first sweep of the year, the comeback, the, the no-hitter. It's been, I mean – the beat down that we have given to the Philadelphia Phillies this year. I, I said it last night. It's like, I, I think I have to stop thumping my chest because it's like, well, the Phillies just aren't good. They're just not that good of a team. And now, now the report came out today that the Phillies, the widow Phillies are not having fun. Clem, did you hear about this? Uh, it was, uh, let me see. Let me find out exactly who I believe it was. Uh, let's see. Kyle Gibson's parents were, oh. uh, were saying that, it doesn't look like you guys are having fun out there. And Nick Castellano said, you know what? My family said the same thing. We don't look like we're having fun out there. I love when they talk like this. Like it's not a billion dollar corporation that you're basically working for in a league that is as cutthroat and serious and professional as any finance, legal, whatever corporation. Stop. Who cares if you're having fun? Go out there and perform, you bums. They're not having fun. Shut up. You guys just suck. Maybe if you're winning ball games and not a crappy team, you'd be having a little more fun, you losers. We may have to instead of the console meter, the Phillies have the fun meter, and that shit is on E right now. It is pinned a little, all the way to the side. <laughs> just a little, little, little in on the fun meter there, but I mean, opposite, opposite feeling over here in Flushing, where I mean that Nick Plummer video with the with the Mario in the background. If you haven't seen it yet, there's the video where Plummer hits the tie, <laughs> the game tying home run, and they play. The the invisible the invincible star song from uh, Mario and it, it is just if you are trying to reach the heart of a thirty something Mets fan the, the the worst generation the fans that didn't experience eighty six and have been watching all this time put a little Mario in with a walk a, a game tying home run and that is the key to my heart that's one of my favorite baseball clips ever man. Yeah, for so for people who didn't see it, I just blogged it. So you go on the blog and check it out. Um, Nick Plummer comes uh, comes out to the Mario Brothers because he's a plumber. LOL, plumber, plumber. And again, the fact that the City Field DJ had the re- the like the thought presence say, of mind, yeah, the presence of mind to say, let's load up the star music in case he hits a home run or uh, has a big hit, and then. <laughs> to have the castle music as they raise the flag down. Yes. Yeah. The only thing I don't know is if they had fireworks. Like if they have one firework for a solo shot, two fireworks for a chair <laughs> on the that's some next level shit. But again, everything about this team feels fucking different right now. It feels absolutely incredible. And yo, what's up with a Memorial Day night game? What is going on? Do we ever play any day games ever again? 
I don't get it, man. I don't get it at all. It's it's uh, that was the first thing I was like. I was like, I know we said we had a day game one of these days. It has to be Memorial Day, right? It's like no, Memorial Night is what we're fucking rocking with these days. And I, I, I hate that. I, I mean, the Mets, the Mets play less day games than anybody in the world. Every time I turn on, yes, the Yankees seem to have a day game. Mets are always at night. I don't know what that's about. It's probably a Wilpon money thing with SNY, but I mean. Memorial Day. It's about the day. Who wants to wait till nighttime for the? I mean, come on. It's not Anchor Lady. It's Anchor Man, and that's a scientific <laughs> fact. It's Memorial Day, you goddamn goons. And hey, Kyle Gibson, you want to talk about having fun? You want to know who's having fun right now? To the Gibson family, the Castellanos family, and anybody else, I'll tell you who's having fun. The New York Metropolitans are having fun. I just had to share the the Escobar clip after he had the walk off last night. Oh, as, as happy as can be, man. Look at that. Pure joy. That and dude needed that more than anybody's ever needed a hit in their life. Look at that. And look at the whole team. The whole team just Everybody comes in. mobbing Our him. Because you know what? The first guy out there. The, 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 there's certain guys who, you know, like when they're struggling and maybe they're overpaid or they're a superstar or they're obnoxious or whatever, you know, people don't care if they're struggling. And then there's a good guy, a professional like, Ed, like Eddie Escobar who like, Everybody wants to see him bust out of that slump. No matter how bad he's playing, people still have his back. So for him to be the one to get that win and then get mobbed is like so perfect because, uh, you, you know, you can't – there's there's a lot of guys on that team that deserve big moments. None more than him, though. That that was all Eddie, and he needed that more than anybody on that team. I was very close to having us put together a graphic, and it said, like, Escobar season, and it was either returned or <laughs> – I love it. Yes. We Let's might be Escobar do that. season. Escobar season return. currently – has returned. <laughs> and again, a couple dudes in their 30s. Like, I'm sure the kids these days are like, what the fuck are you Yeah, they don't even know what I mean. About? They like, don't there even was know this kid, children, there was a song at this rate. Shit, what is that? Like 95-ish? Hate me now, right? 96, 97? No, so that's that later. That's a little later. That's got to be because that was uh, – that's late 90s because 95, 96. Is like that, was, that was it, – it was, it, it was written. It, that's like his third album. Hate oh, me now. Ninety nine. Shit. Yeah. That's fucking okay. So I feel a little better right now. That was only twenty three years ago. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. But, hey, everything is old as new. The we're the same old Mets. The first time that uh, the, this is the biggest lead they've had in May. Uh, the the I think the biggest lead they've had. The Yankees and the Mets are both in first place right now. So yeah, what's it going to be? Because it, it's going to be these games are only in April. Then it was these games are only in May. Now people will say, well, you know, the Mets always have the June swoon. We'll get through that. Then they'll say, well, it's the first half, and then we have to play in the second half. And I mean, we're just going to keep knocking down all of these fake, imaginary, made-up things from the past that don't apply to a team as good and as professional as this, as long as they don't get injured. And if, you know, if you get injured, what can you do? Uh, but as long as this team is healthy and playing, we're going to just keep proving everybody wrong with all of their made-up you know, reasons why these games don't count. It's like, okay, man, you know, we're like 33 and 17 or whatever. Uh, and none of it counts. Fine. Whatever you guys say, fucking losers. At this rate, I'm getting, I'm, uh, I'm getting the, the, the chirps now. I'm shocked. Cause I, I just go like, Hey, this June swoon at NJ tank 99. And just, I, if I was a Yank Mets hater, I would really put all my eggs in the June swoon basket. Cause again, we're banged up. Got a ton of tough games coming up on the road. Again, also the Mets playing late makes my life harder. So I feel like it makes it harder for the team. Yeah. <laughs> as, as dumb as that sounds, right? And no, they've just skipped to, well, when September comes, you guys are going to blow it. I'm like, you guys are punting the June swoon, the first half, wait until the All-Star break. And we're just going to go to the September collapses of 15 fucking years ago. So, I mean, I guess we're doing pretty good if we're bringing up 2007 right now. I, I, the only thing that sucks is, I mean, listen, there's every chance that they that they get beat up on this road trip because it's so crazy and they're so banged up. The fact that it's coinciding with the beginning of June sucks because yeah. if it was May or July, it's just whatever. It's a bad road trip. Whenever the Mets start to play poorly in June, all of a sudden we start seeing ghosts. So just know that if we do struggle here, it's not some black magic, Will Pond, dark era june mojo it is just the fact that we're injured and playing the best teams on the west coast yep and again if <laughs> that's why this series against the nationals is so goddamn important right mm -hmm. now uh again peterson fetty i guess his name i don't know this fucking guy i forgot uh trevor williams corbin and then carrasco versus tbd are the three games memorial night game tuesday night game then we have the getaway game on wednesday at one o'clock at 1 10 p.m before they have to fly out to la and then play at la mm -hmm. at 10 10 so 
Got to win these games. I mean, two out of three is the fucking bare minimum. Minimum, minimum, man. You cannot lose this series. Uh, you almost got to sweep it. It's it's just like good teams handle their business in situations like this before they really start to uh, embark on the on like the the, the tough stuff. So I, I don't care who's pitching. I don't care what the matchups are. Like you just mash your way to at least two out of three, if not a sweep. We just need like eight runs a night every night. It's just got to happen. Yep, one hundred percent. The Nats and the Nats, like we said, they, uh, they I think they took two out of three against the Rockies, and they were kind of back and forth against some decent teams. However, they they just played in Colorado. I I would imagine their bullpen's probably a little you know taxed like ours is. So at this rate, like may the best team win. Hopefully, hopefully Nelson Cruz keeps slipping and he's showing his age a little bit. And just got to worry about Juan Soto, who's going to scare the ever living shit out of us forever. Um, Until he's on our team. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, and then I was saying to people. This is your time to go out and watch the Mets play. They're not going to see them for like you're even though they're going to be playing for the next two weeks, we're probably not going to see a lot of them because we're all going to be falling asleep watching the game. So go out to City Field, mm -hmm. get your tickets. You got to go. Where do you get your tickets from, Kevin? Got to go to game time. The best place to get the most up to date, best pricing, best tickets available. We're talking about seats. You're on the first baseline, the third baseline. You want to get right behind home plate like Stu. Finer in the building at the lowest cost possible. This is the app to use because it has up to the millisecond info on ticket pricing. So somebody buys the tickets, they can't come, they want to sell them. You wait them out, you wait them out, you wait them out. It's like 10 minutes before first pitch. They drop the price as low as they possibly can to sell it. Bam, that's what you slide in. You get tickets that you never would imagine at prices you didn't even know were possible. You download the app, you go to the corner, click settings, you make a profile. Uh, you buy your tickets and you use promo code, what, Believe? Yep, yep. You guys, so you download the Game Time app, go to the account tab, create a login, redeem code Believe for $20 off your first ter your first purchase. Terms apply. You download Game Time, last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Live that Stu Finer life. Get those tickets you never thought were possible. The prices are already going to be low. And then you get a little $20 off. Support the pod, support the Mets. Everybody wins right now, Kevin, right now, that Wednesday day game, $2 tickets. That's eight dollars. I just bought hot dog rolls, which are basically the cheapest rolls you can buy in the fucking cookout game. It was two fifty for hot dog rolls. I, you can go to a Mets game for cheaper than a fucking pack of hot dog you're, rolls. You're getting a, a quarter tank of gas right now, basically <laughs> for the price of Mets tickets. So that, that's the, the drip that out. drips on your shoes when you take it out too early. That's two dollars worth of gas that just drips on your shoes right there. I'll tell you so something, I add, I'd like to take it out a little early on purpose just to get the smell. As I'm putting it back in, I'm like. Just to get a little whiff of gasoline. The I, I'll never forget this. One of the old Kevin Clancy KFC blogs that like made me know you were my dude. You're like sometimes I like to fuck around and just pour a little on my sneakers so I have the smell the rest of the day. And I was like, oh, this guy's a sick bastard. This is my dude. I still remember that to this day. So uh. <laughs> I don't even remember saying that, man. Those old blogs, I just let it fly, dude. We're just you know professional. Yo, everybody, assholes. everybody's winning. Everybody's feeling good, except for uh, Tommy Pham and, and Jock Peterson right now. Uh, <laughs> The talk of baseball. This was out of straight out of the onion, man. This story is an onion headline. Uh, Tommy Pham slapping Jock Peterson uh, out in the field during warmups. Like we saw the video. It's just a straight up Will Smith slap. And it's all over fantasy football. Now, Clem, you are the fantasy football guru. Mm -hmm. You are probably the most diehard fantasy guy I know. It sounds like to me what Jock Peterson was doing with his fantasy team was legal yet frowned upon, or is this just Tommy fan being oversensitive and everybody does this? So the IR slot, Oh, Kevin, 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 take a seat children. Let me tell you about the IR slot in fantasy football and the fucking <laughs> controversies it can brew. It's one of those things where if a guy goes on the IR slot, you like to, cause he's on the IR, even if it's like the little, three weeks, six weeks, they've changed it over the years. And then with COVID where every fucking team would just get wiped out. So you kind of needed to have the IR slot just to throw like Lamar Jackson got it for the fifth time. I got to throw Lamar Jackson back on the IR. I can't cut him and getting a quarterback. So it definitely became this like weird gray area of the sport, um, the sport, the game. I'm a fucking asshole. I'm such a nerd with this shit. I mean, well, here's the thing though. Yes, you are, but it is, you know, Tommy fam says like, there's a lot of money on the line. It is, it's just, it can be a serious thing. It's silly, but it can be real. Yeah. And I'm, I'm telling you for like people who aren't into fantasy or the people who are this shit, like with me, my league, you know, I, I, my, I have like buddies and we, you know, we put money in or whatever that the money, 
means nothing to me. Nothing. Because these are guys who I'm going to be – it's all about the ball busting during the draft, the text mm-hmm. messages during the season. Whenever you say something, you could – you know, you still bust balls about a pick made. in this – the league I'm in right now is 2004. So this is our fucking 19th season coming Wow. Out. Like – it's just one of those things that it's, it's, it's all about your buddies and busting, uh, busting balls. Now, obviously this is a little different. Well, that's with- the thing. So that's an important piece of the puzzle though, because most fantasy leagues are guys you're best friends with. You've known for 20 years. It's when you start getting into those work leagues, which is basically yep. what this is. These guys kind of know each other. They're kind of buddies. I'm sure it was more like, Tommy Pham joined the league because, uh, I don't know, uh, Freddie Freeman is his best friend. And Freddie also knows Jock, so they're in the league together. But that doesn't mean that Tommy and Jock are friends. That just means they have the Elaine, Jerry Seinfeld, George Buffer. You know what I mean? So all of a sudden, you got two guys who don't really know each other, who don't really like each other. You're busting balls in the text message group, like you said. But one of those guys takes it seriously while the other one doesn't. You got a lot of money on the line. Maybe one of those guys has a lot of money and the other one doesn't. Mm -hmm. Then you got a guy who believes in the IR. The other one doesn't. And that is a recipe for disaster. It just doesn't usually result in physical violence. But, hey, that's what we do these days. You get slapped in the face. They bum rush you on stage. They slap you in workouts. Uh, The world has gone violent, and that's just just how it's going to be. I just can't believe that these guys didn't get together real quick. Just one minute before they both had to talk to the media and do a a Francisco Lindor, Jeff McNeil, come up with a rat and raccoon situation because for them to both just stand there dead serious, not even a smirk on their face and just be like, well, you know, it's a, it's a fantasy football dispute. And uh, let me tell you what happened. I was like, I, I, I cannot believe it. I could not believe that they just were like, let's tell the truth. And, uh, and like, here we are, like, I mean, suspensions and, 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 I don't know what else, like rivalries now forever. Um, I'm happy though. I'm so happy they did this. This is my favorite sports story of the year. My Definitely yeah. my favorite baseball story until that goddamn Reds fan shits in the Toyota Tundra. <laughs> this is my favorite fucking story of 2022. And it like, it's bringing me back to sports. This is like when sports are fun and when life feels normal to me, it's like the silly shit like this. And yeah. I respect Jock Peterson for having the receipts and being like, yeah, I had this gift. And it was, you know, three weightlifters, a giant uh, Dodger Which is a and a Padre. Great gift, by the way. <laughs> Have you seen it? Yeah. It's, it's the girl, it's, like, the, her head getting ripped back and, like, thrown to the ground is absolutely spectacular. Pull up that. I'll, I'll explain it while you pull it up. The people yeah, I, I got it. it. I'll, I'll yeah, pull it this up. Is, I mean, this thing. is um, in the meme world. Listen, not everyone can, can you know, handle the, the ball busting in the, in the group chat. Not everyone is made for fantasy sports. And not everyone is made for the meme world. This is a... Very funny, very disrespectful meme. And uh, Tom Pham just doesn't play like that. He, I mean, he said it. He was like, I don't play with my money and I don't play with – look look at this chick. Watch her on the right-hand side there. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh. And it's, it's not that it just hits her on the head. Watch the delay. It hits her and then, she, then the legs sweep out from under her. You know that her neck was all messed up, broken vertebrae, concussion – Oh, this is as this is as this is up there to me with with Grape Lady and and all the classics. This is an unbelievable meme slash gif, and you know some guys are just not built to handle the ball busting on the internet. I'll I'll be honest, Kev. I saw that this was the the gif that was used. First of all, if you're not ready for the meme world, there's a reason why Vin Dog is like he's a full time employee at Barstool, just memeing people to death. It's fucking, it's a dog eat dog world. Part of my take has an entire guy for memes. Like yep. it is the fucking internet war of it's like the war on the yeah, internet. Yeah, this is currency. This is like ammunition. Yeah. These are bullets on the internet right now. And if you don't got it, you don't got it. And I'll be honest, I thought this was like um, one of those gifts from like a Monday Night Football game. I didn't realize this is an actual human that took that fucking weight on the head. <laughs> yeah, no, so no. This is fucking no, my this, brain this up woman, the time. This woman undoubtedly like broke her neck. And 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 you know what the thing is? I, I mean, as much as I'm, I'm serious about, you know, some people can't take it on the internet. This was not like a, you know, if, if, he, if he sent a video that was like, crude and 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 vulgar and like really disrespectful and you know something about how bad the like the Padres suck dick or whatever like this is as this is tame it's very very funny but this is not the type of of gift that usually launches you know ships but Tommy Pham is just like you know he doesn't mess around dude apparently 
all the baseball fans, like the diehard baseball fans, I sound like Tico Texas, the baseball fans, all like the diehard baseball fans are saying like Tommy Pham's always in the middle of shit. I didn't realize he's like a fucking a rabble rouser, but it he's sounds a like a gangster, man. Yeah. Listen, just, if, you know, and, and Jock Peterson's on the other side being like, whatever, dude, both these guys are kind of like, you want to, you want to do it? Let's do it. Uh, it's just, it's one of these moments. Hey, athletes, they're just like us too. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. And again, you talk shit on the fantasy chain 99% of the time. Like, there's stuff that has been written on my fantasy message board, and then that became an email chain, and now it's a text chain as the technologies have evolved. There's stuff there you would never say to someone's face. It's even like your best friend. There's things, you know, about uh, your family, your friends, your right. fucking your looks, whatever it may be. Just, I mean, you see it on Twitter all the time. It's that times like a million more because these guys know the darkest, deepest secrets of your life that have like really fucked you up. So you're going to do that because all is fair, love, war, and fantasy football. The fact that this is actually a real thing. And again, like you said, it's not like he was like, Jack, you know, Tommy fan, you fucking suck. And we are all better at you at baseball. It was a Padres meme. It was as harmless as I can get, but it's kind of like at the Barstool League. It's like, you know, I could be playing and, you know, me and you could have fantasy teams in the Barstool Fantasy Football League. But then there's going to be inevitably people as we've grown who I barely know on other teams. And if we just start talking shit, if one person takes it the wrong way, that's kind of how it goes. And I, I'll say this, though. Using the IR slot, and even if it was Jeff Wilson who, like, went crazy and won a, people a bunch of leagues two years ago, not last year, but two years ago, I think that's not a reason for a fucking slap in the face. I think no. if, if there, there's all the time, every league has the one where there's a, a, a trade between, like, a first-place team and a last-place team, and it's not fair, and the last-place team is basically giving their players away, and you're like, did he pay you to do this? I've seen friendships ended among uh, because of this. I've seen fantasy leagues ended yep. because of this. And I'm telling you, there's probably like murders that have happened because oh, of fantasy football league. No, there, there are definitely, there has been bloodshed. There have been funerals over this, no doubt. And, you know, both guys have made around $25 million their, their careers. They're actually very even money wise. So you can't even really like whatever the money was, it's, it's, it's equal to both of them. I'm sure it's big dollars. These guys are probably not paying, playing for peanuts as much as you say it isn't about the money when it starts to get into the level of professional athletes, it probably is, you know, several zeros and uh, you know, people don't mess around. Uh, It's, it's crazy that it went down in public and it's wild that they just went with the truthful explanation, but thank God they did because like Clem said, it's one of the best aside from the New York Mets being an absolute powerhouse. It's uh, it's one of the best, uh, sports baseball moments of the, of the, of the year. <laughs> yeah. Like we said here, the Mets put on their scoreboard yesterday, totals, total fantasy football disputes over under a half. I mean, that's just an a plus fucking line. We should just be happy. We live in times where the, the Jock Peterson, Tommy fan yeah. fantasy fucking football war came out and we got to live it. So, um, we were here. These are the good times. Like we said last night, enjoy it. We have the Nets got to beat the Nets at least two out of three. How's mama Clance feeling right now? She's feeling good. Mine good about the Mets? Ma! Ma, Man, she meatloaf! The meatloaf! Ma, the meatloaf! Now nah, she's, she's feeling good, but she'll she's feeling good, but she'll never allow herself to, like, relax. So she's probably, you know, she's seen it just like we have, so she's waiting for the other shoe to drop. But uh, she was very happy for Escobar, I know that. That's good, that's good. So, yeah, I think even the Escobar haters will – you know, bite their tongues a little bit, unless again he goes like oh for twelve the next uh, three games uh, against. Well, the he's out of uh, he's out of Mets twenty one. How you feeling, Ma? You feeling good about the Mets? Hey, That's what I said. Yeah, she's, yeah. You know, you know, she's, I'll she's, take it, Mama Clance. Day by day, day by day. <laughs> in the eighth inning, I wasn't happy. Last yeah, and she goes yeah. in the eighth inning. I wasn't happy. And then you know you end up, but we get to do it all over again today. Uh, yeah, no, I mean as long as. No, it's a night game. Memorial Day night game is brutal. But as long as uh, Escobar's out of Mets 2128's doghouse, that's all I care about. So, yeah. So, if you haven't listened to the post game show from last night, go watch it. Mets 2128. Um, we had, what was the guy's name? Come slip? Uh, some, uh, you can probably can't see it. Comes yeah. comes was on there. We had some characters last night. It was an absolute ball. Everyone was uh, living on cloud nine thanks to Escobar. And, Dude, 5,000 uh, people the- last night watched. <laughs> on Memorial Day weekend, I mean, it, it's it's Memorial Day weekend. It's a regular. I mean, it's a big win, but it's still a regular season win. We had hundreds upon hundreds of people uh, concurrent live last night, and by the morning, we had five thousand views 
So we got to believe is, is growing and the Mets community is growing. And as we get bigger and better, we get more bandwagon fans and we, ri- we rally our, our core. And by the time October hits, God willing, if this team's in the postseason, we're going to have a, 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 an army behind us here on the Internet. So uh, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. Make sure you comment. Uh, make sure you follow the Instagram and the Twitter Make sure you you subscribe on the YouTube because we got uh, we got a lot a lot more in store this year if this team keeps rolling. Yeah, get into your you know family friends Google accounts, have them subscribe, thumbs mm-hmm. up. We're gonna build this shit. We're gonna hey, we're there's there's talks of different you know things about tailgate shows, all this kind of stuff we can do, but we have to put up the numbers so then we can pitch it to the powers that be. And I believe are we gonna try to get what is it the the sweep ten percent off for the merch? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Let me let me text them right now. Yeah, so we're going to get that. So if you want your merch, get your merch um, after we put it on sale. A little more day weekend post Philly sweep uh, sale here. So, um, uh, yeah, and again, I don't think we have any shirts coming out. I feel like we just kept releasing them for a while because, again, when a team is good, it just breeds creativity and, and great uh, merch. So we'll go from there. And, uh, I mean, at this point, it basically says itself. Got to believe. Got to believe. All right, thanks for watching the latest episode of We Gotta Believe. Make sure you subscribe across everything here on YouTube. If you're listening on iTunes, if you're listening on Spotify, anywhere you watch or listen to us, make sure you subscribe, keep your notifications on, leave a comment, support the pod. We gotta believe.